I make no claims to being an expert at glass painting. Uh, I did get some very invaluable help and advice when I took some lessons from Linda at McMahon Art Glass. Uh, there's also a couple of videos that are real helpful by a guy named Stanley Klopfenstein that you can uh, get those. Now what we're doing here, this is a different process. It's done by hand and instead of using an oil base, we're going to use a water base. So uh, I've already got some of this here. Um, you can see it's kind of clogged up, so it, it's a little too thick for what I want. So I'm going to add a little bit of water. You're done. Well, you want it to be consistent. Um, now, on something like this, rather than using a glass cleaner, this powder actually has a little bit of grit to it. So if I were to just do something like this, you can see right there, uh, that's probably a smudge from my finger, and that's not going to go on well. So we want to clean that off. So this is cleaning the glass as well. So I've already got one coat on here of the blue. I'm going to come back later on and do some more coats to get that to be a little bit more intense. But now I've got this where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and put on a little more of this paint. Again, you don't want to get it too thick. And you're going to take a Badger Blender brush and you're going to try and even this out and get it as consistent as you can without seeing any brush strokes in there. So that looks pretty good. You really do want to do this on a light table. So now what I'm going to do to just kind of hide any brush strokes that are still showing is I'm going to come in here with my brush and I'm going to stipple it. Now that's going to give it a little bit of texture and it's going to hide any of those brush strokes. I'm not going to worry about that so much because that's a piece that I can use in, in an area where that's going to get cut off. You have a limited amount of time to do this because it's uh, it's going to start to dry on you. Now, as I'm looking at this, I can see, all right, well, there's some areas right there that's a little bit darker than that, so it's not as consistent as I would like. This is a very forgiving thing. You can just wipe it off and start off over again if you need to. So I'm just going to go back in and I'm going to try it again. Make sure I got that. It's hard to get this, uh, this technique down to get it blended well. So when you're first doing it, you want it to be a little bit harder so that you're trying to get the, the uh, paint on there evenly. And then you're gradually you're going to go in different directions and you're going to do it lighter and lighter until at the end you're almost just brushing air. Uh, so before it dries, then you go in with your brush and stipple it and you can do it uh, lighter or harder. This is something that you just have to, to get good at with technique and practice. And uh, I haven't been doing it that much. So again, talk to uh, Stanley through his videotapes and, and he gives you a really good uh, foundation in this. He's been doing it for, for over 40 years. All right, so we're going to let that dry. And once it's completely dry, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to scrape off the parts that I don't want to keep. All right, now that this is dried, what I'm going to do, um, there's no binding agent on this gum arabic or anything like that to keep it sticking to the glass. So it's not going to fall off if I pick it up, but it is going to come off pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and use, you know, these different tools. Uh, some of them are brushes. This is a rubber little thing uh, that you use for working with clay. And I'm going to scrape off the parts that I don't want to keep. So in this case where you see this V, that's what I want. I'm going to scrape off these areas here where the blue are. And uh, I don't really care about the outside because I'm going to end up cutting these off anyway. You have to be very, very careful if you, if you lay your hand on this or touch it, it's going to come off. So um, I just made this little, um, little wooden bridge that I can lay across it. So that's going to allow me to get in close here and do the things that I need to do. I want to remove really large amounts, I'll use a, use a brush something like this. 
And as you're doing this, uh, every once in a while you just want to kind of blow on it to make sure that um, you're not scraping off too much. When you do that though, be careful that you don't get any spit on it because once you get something on here like that or you lay your hand on it when you don't want to, there's really no easy way to fix it. You just got to start over. Now since I'm just using uh, water here, if you want to uh, be really conservative about it, you could actually scrape this back and put it in the jar and use it again. So now I'm going to go in with my little bit bigger brush and with some of your more complex patterns you really have to keep in mind what you're scraping off and what you're not scraping off. You don't have to go right up to the edge um, the black when this fires in will cover it up so you got a little bit of leeway there to get this to work and then for the more, more detailed spots I might go in with just a smaller brush and for the really close-in stuff I might use something like this and these come with different shapes on them with the rubber so I'll just get in here and I'll very carefully scrape that off. So since the rest of these things in here are I'm going to cut them I don't have to work too hard on this I'm really just going to open up the blue areas then I'm going to fire this. Uh, I would probably fire um, the blue at least two more times to get it more intense and the red two more times so so three colors or three uh, firings each to get this to to be the intensity that I want. Uh, if you're not a patient person this isn't the process for you. Uh, it takes a while. Uh, there are kilns that you can get that fire the glass a little bit better. Um, Stanley Klopfenstein, uh, he has a kiln that he built himself and he says he can get about seven firings a day in with the kiln that I've got. Uh, the most that I can do is get about three if I start in the morning and then also let it fire through the night. Now at this point if I make a mistake it's pretty easy to start over. Uh, if I don't notice a mistake and go ahead and put it in the kiln then, then that becomes permanent and there's not really anything that you can do about that. So you want to you want to expect this very carefully before you put it in the kiln because once once that heat goes on it then it's permanent. Now for some of these areas in the middle this is where the bridge comes in handy. I really don't want to lay my palm on this so this gives me a resting spot. I can go in there and clean that up. Once you think you've got it all done, you want to turn off your light table and look at it that way too. And sometimes you can see some areas where you thought you had it all cleaned up and you didn't. Once all the painted pieces are fired, it's time to cut them out. You can use a traditional glass cutter, but I've got some angles that would be impossible to cut that way, so I'm going to use a ring saw. It's fairly tense at this point because if you mess it up, you've got to do a lot of work over again, so you want to be very careful with it. From this point on, it's traditional copper foiling. I will grind the edges, making sure that everything fits as good as possible, then foil it, then solder it all together. As we get down to the end of the project here, there is an issue of concern that I want to mention to you. If you're using the copper foil method, you're going to be soldering both sides, and then you're going to put patina on the solder to make it turn black. It turns black because it's a strong acid, and the acid will eat the paint off of the glass. This is the reason why I did my design backwards. I painted on the back. So I solder the back and the front, but I'm only going to put patina on the front. This will minimize the contact between that acid patina and the glass. Here's the finished piece. It was quite a challenging project, but I'm very pleased with the result. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks for watching.